Hello, this is Bini here. Today I want to share which I thought would be a very, very interesting topic as how does issuer, issuer of warrants, issuer of DLCs that make money. Specifically, I want to talk about how does a warrant issuer makes money because last night I was invited by SGX to speak to a group of investors and uh, to team up with Macquarie. Uh, Macquarie is the only warrant issuer in Singapore and um, Jamie from Macquarie who is a head of warrants and and she was very upfront. She addressed a burning question, which I think a lot of you guys would have. And that would be, how does a warrant issuer make money? I thought this is really very interesting. All right. Uh, she gave a very different uh, perspective. Later on, I'll be talking about the different ways that warrant issuer make money. And that will give you a, a lot of insight and also how you can make money from trading into warrants. Jamie's presentation talked about two ways that issuers make money. In fact, there, I think there are three ways. Uh, first, she talked about time decay, and second would be hedging. And third, which she didn't mention, would be via spread. Let me explain them one by one, how these are the methods that issuers make money. And really, it is not that they are making money from your losses. They are making money from these three methods. Spreads in trading are the difference between two prices. The most common type of spread is the bid ask spread, which is the difference between the highest price that you are willing to buy and the lowest price that you are willing to sell. Now, this means that if you want to buy this warrant, you will have to pay the higher price, which is the ask price. If you want to sell the warrant that you've purchased, then you would need to sell it at the bid price. In this case, spread is your cost of trading. The warrant issuer might get a cut of the spread from a broker or the exchange. And what I've learned from Jamie, one tip is that if you want to buy a warrant, you want to buy the warrant that offers the tighter spread. In a way, if you would want to close your warrant immediately upon purchase, then your cost of trading, which is the spread, would be minimal. Jamie also said that warrant issuer will hedge the position of what the client did. Say for example, the issuer sell a call warrant to you. In other words, you bought a call warrant thinking that in the future, price will go up. You will make money from a call warrant when prices moved up. To hedge against these risks, then the warrant issuer will typically buy a corresponding amount of the underlying asset. For example, if a warrant issuer sells a call warrant on S&P 500 futures to you, they may buy S&P 500 futures to hedge their position. If the S&P 500 rises above the strike price of the warrant, the issuer will lose money on the warrant position and hence you will gain from the call warrant that you purchase. But they will be able to make a profit on their hedge position. Lastly, Jamie also said that issuer will make money from time decay. Then what is exactly time decay? Time decay in warrants is the decrease in the value of the warrant as it gets closer to its expiry date. Warrants issue always have an expiry date. As the warrant gets closer to expiry, there is less time for the underlying asset to move in favor of the warrant holder. Here is a simple analogy to help you understand time decay in warrants. Imagine that you have a coupon to buy a cake. And the expiry date of the cake is one week because you can't imagine that the cake will last forever. And if you don't eat the cake in one week, the cake will turn bad. If you wait until the day before the coupon expire to buy the cake, you will be worth less than it is today because there's a decay process as the day passes. In the same way, the value of the warrant decreases as it gets closer to the expiry date. This is because there's less time for the underlying asset price to move in favor of the warrant holder. Let me show you an example here. This is a Dow Jones warrant which expires on December. The current price right now for Dow Jones is about 33750 If I choose this warrant and I say that maybe perhaps I'm aiming for it to drop because this is a put warrant and I think that it's going to come to about 33000 That means that from the current price of 33750 to 33000 that's a movement of 750 points. Now, if this is to be achieved by today, then I would make 33000 two percent from this warrant this is the calculated price now if price is to move to thirty three thousand in one week's time then i can only make 15 percent so what is the difference here the difference would be the time decay 
That means from a 32% to a 15% gain, that difference of 17.5% theoretically would be your time decay. And if that price is to move to 33,000 in three weeks time, which is what I've keyed in here, then the warren effectively is not going to make you money. Even if it moves to 33,000, you will be losing about 25% from here. Now the difference here would be the time decay. And this brings about a very, very important use of how you and me as retailer can make use of Warren. Then how can you make money from trading warrants? First, I have to disclaim that trading in any leveraged products is very high risk, including warrants. Yes, you will be able to make money, but likewise, you can lose all the money that you put in. One of the things that Jamie mentioned in the video was leverage returns. Now, what is the leverage returns? It means that you are looking at a potential to generate large returns on a relatively small investment. This is because warrants offer leverage, which means that a small change in the price of the underlying asset can result in a much larger change in the price of the warrants. What I like to do when I trade Warren is I typically like to trade off the critical price level. So these are very important price level that qualify for a make or break. For example, in this trade on S&P 500, price retraced to a previous support level and this support level was actually a neckline of this huge head and shoulder pattern. Right? In this case, uh, price will either be resisted at the neckline or price will break through the neckline. So in this case, this is a make or break lever. So if you look at the nature of warrants, okay, they are lowly priced, they are leveraged. If you could just park, for example, a warrant at that point of time, thinking that either it can go up or go down for the explosive move, then you are going to capture that full advantage of trading into a warrants. Or the other way of using Warren is to trade it off as a hedge to your existing position. Say for example, I have a long position with a stocks. All right. For example, I bought in a DBS stocks and DBS is going to have earnings very soon. And I foresee that this earning is going to result in a huge move of DBS and I want to hedge my position. So how do I hedge a position is to purchase a put Warren. In any case that if price moves down, then I own the stocks, which I'm going to make a loss because I already long the stock but my put warrant would have made me the money remember very important when you want to trade warrant you want to choose warrant of tight spreads and you want to identify which warrant would have the least amount of time decay and that's the reason why i think you should give jamie a call because during the presentation with her i realized that she is really very sincere to make sure her clients are educated she gave out her name card and wants every of the clients to book a personal time with with her so that she can educate the clients on how to trade her warrants. I also think that we need to consider and you know explore into different instruments because the market is getting more volatile and this is a fact. We can't be just going on a one track which is to assume that it is bullish market. There are times that we need to hedge our position. There are times that we need to take advantage of a dropping market. I'm not saying also that the market is going to drop. I'm saying that in case and let's get educated on more different instruments. If there's any questions that you would like to ask on how I use all this instrument, drop me a message at the comment section. I'll be very happy to go through with you. And I see you in my next video.